after Einstein's theory of relativity was popularized, as in like people actually heard about it, people started to imagine time travel. It's a relatively new phenomenon because people never considered time to be something like space that you could just move around in at will. But with the new theories of time, uh, it came to be accepted that maybe this could be something that could happen. I mean, physics seems to kind of lay the groundwork for some kind of time travel. And people got imaginative and they came up with things like the grandfather paradox. The grandfather paradox is uh, a simplification, really, of what Nathaniel Schachner was writing about in a story called Ancestral Voices back in 1933. And in 1933, he imagined a scientist who lived in 1935, Dr. Pennypacker. And the story was that Emmett Pennypacker goes back in time to 452 AD, but when he gets there, he finds himself to be in the middle of a skirmish. He finds his great 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 grandmother and his great 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 grandfather, who happens to be one of Attila's Huns that is trying to attack his great 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 grandmother. So he kills him. When Emmett Pennypacker then comes back in time, or I should say he doesn't, uh, what has happened is that all of the descendants of this dead guy have just literally disappeared from the universe. So that's the story. The philosophical paradox that arises out of this is, okay, well, if Emmett Pennypacker didn't exist, then how is it possible for him to go back in time and kill his grandfather? But if he does not kill his grandfather, then he would exist in which case it would be possible for him to go back in time and kill his grandfather. So you see the problem. If he does exist, then he doesn't exist. And if he doesn't exist, then he does exist. Sounds pretty paradoxical. And it's because of the theoretical possibility of backwards time travel. It's a problem specifically for our linear concept of temporality. What is that? That's the situation we are all kind of familiar with, where we conceive of time as an arrow always moving towards the future, never going backwards. And we put events on the arrow that we think have occurred in some kind of causal order. So if we're talking about grandparents specifically, back in 452 AD, that Hun Hakim who had a kid, 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 kid etc. until Emmett Pennypacker came to exist in 1935 to build the time machine. But what if it were possible for him to insert himself way back in the chain of causality? Is it even possible? Is the past the past and the future the future? Or can I actually go back and change something? So it has implications for our view of the universe itself, and specifically how causality works. So one of our possible problems is with the notion of determinism, or the theory that some things or all things are already, in some sense, determined to happen or not happen. How would that apply here? Well. Either it's the case that, you know, the past is the past and it can't be changed, then Pennypacker shouldn't be able to go back in time and change anything. Uh, the universe simply wouldn't allow it. On the other hand, maybe it's the case that Pennypacker was always determined to have gone back in time, in which case it was already determined as part of the structure of the universe that he went back in time and killed his grandfather, such that the world can retain its determinism, uh, and in which case we would say that his actions weren't of his own free will, and in some case, I guess, well, he never did actually exist because it was always the case that he would have killed his own grandfather, annihilating himself. Maybe. On the other hand, what if there is this freedom? 
What if we do have the freedom to go back and intervene in the chain of causality? That's where the story goes, right? He goes back in time, changes something, and then a new chain of causality commences. One where about 50,000 people just cease to exist. If that's the case, then it seems we're leaving ourselves open to vastly random and discontinuous states of affairs, because then it would be the case that up until this point, right, we were on one chain of causality. Penny Packer went back in time and changed it such that up until this moment when he went back in time, things were progressing like this, but only after he went back did they progress like that, such that there would be a sudden jump from one timeline to the other. That's where the 50,000 people, all of the Huns' descendants, disappear in the universe. So if we're going to allow for backwards time travel and a concept of free will, then it seems that we're going to run into a rather chaotic universe. One that's less reassuring than the idea that he was always meant to do that. It was part of the fabric of the universe to begin with. So this is a fun paradox and possibly completely fictional. Uh, now, if there's going to be a notion of time that allows it to happen, then it becomes a concern. But maybe it doesn't have to be that way. In any case, there are some fun representations of it if you watch The Simpsons or Futurama. There are episodes where Fry goes back in time and kills his own grandfather, and they use the determinist explanation that he was always meant to do that. Now, an argument that always comes up is that if it were possible to travel back in time, shouldn't we look around and see time travelers? Now, you might take that as evidence for the fact that it will never happen or that it could theoretically never happen. Uh, or some people theorize, on the other hand, maybe once time travel is invented, then it's only possible to go back as far as the time when time travel was invented. I don't know. Perhaps our problem is with the notion of the time arrow itself, which is our name for the concept of time where it moves in one linear consistent fashion towards the future. We call that the time arrow. What if that's not how time works? Uh, what if it is a big ball of wibbly wobbly stuff instead that you could travel between? Uh, what if it's just our limited human perspective that makes us see time that way?